tennis elbow, and also an introduction to platelet-rich plasma and what it takes to have a power grip. This is a very common issue. It may affect 1-3% to of adults at any given time. It is certainly a nuisance to anyone who has to grip, pull, or lift. So pretty much any of you. Also, annoyingly, the name does not do it justice. I mean, something that hurts and limits so many people called tennis elbow. So, we are talking about tennis elbow in this video. You do not need to play tennis to get it. Another name for this is lateral epicondylitis, and even this name does not adequately describe the issue. For the sake of this video, I will be using tennis elbow as the term, but you will soon realize that while this is the most common term, it is not the best description. The goals of this video are to describe the symptoms, causes, detail the anatomy that is affected, and talk about the treatment of this very common problem. I will also give an intro to platelet-rich plasma injections and what it requires to have a power grip. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board-certified orthopedic surgeon and specialist in the arm. I'm also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I am trying to keep those of you who are active and want to stay that way informed on how our bodies work and how to keep them moving. I use the context of combat sports as this is an extreme of what we put our bodies through. So, tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis, what is it? The symptoms are pain at the outside or lateral aspect of the elbow. Often you can push on the exact spot that hurts. Sometimes people describe it as a burning pain. It can radiate down the forearm. It is often noticed when lifting or gripping things, which causes weakness with those activities. Many notice that the pain is very bad at the end of the day and that the elbow is stiff, sore when trying to get the arm straight, especially after a prolonged rest period. A big issue for patients is how long the symptoms last. It can often take 6 to 12 months for symptoms to resolve. So what is really going on? The anatomy. There are tendons that attach to the humerus, the upper part of the elbow, at the lateral epicondyle. This is a bony prominence that most of you can feel on yourselves. The tendons that attach to this location primarily act as extensors of the wrist and fingers. The tendon that is most often involved in tennis elbow is the extensor carpi radialis brevis, the ECRB. This tendon's job is to extend the wrist, a motion that we have to do all of the time. There's something called the power grip. This is the position of our hand when trying to grip something. You will notice that to grip something with the most strength, our wrist must extend. You can try to make a tight fist with your wrist flexed, but it's pretty clear that this is much weaker. So those of you who do combat sports that require gripping, seen very commonly in Sambo, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or Judo, where the combatants are strongly gripping the gi and using it to manipulate their opponent, are really going to notice an issue with their grip. Now, why is lateral epicondylitis a bad term? Other than being a mouthful, itis implies inflammation. You can see my video about inflammation if you've got a chance. The pathology looking at tissues under a microscope of the diseased tissue does not actually show inflammation. It shows tissues that look like repeated micro trauma, but without a good healing response. This is important to keep in mind when we get to the, the treatment portion of things. So how does it start? What's the cause? It's most common in those that are 30 to 50 years old, but can affect anybody. Sometimes a direct blow to the elbow can cause it. More commonly, it is related to repetitive use with heavier tasks like wrenching or hammering or painting or drilling those judo throws or holding those lapel chokes. Rarely it is actually tennis that causes it, though the backhand can certainly stress the right area. Sometimes you just don't know what caused it. The treatment. How do we get better? There are many ways to attack tennis elbow. Keep in mind that this is tissue within a wrist extensor tendon that sees repeated microtrauma and just cannot get a robust healing response started. So I will always strongly advise two things at the first visit. One, rest. For those of you who cannot rest, we will call it activity modifications. This could be reducing the amount of gripping and lifting that is done, or at least picking things up with your palm facing up or supinating, as this does not require the power grip. 
two, stretching. Gentle, frequent stretching, 10 times a day for a minute, especially before using the arm, is very helpful. It allows the tendon that is trying to heal to be gently opened up as opposed to violently pulled apart. The best stretch, elbow straight, wrist flex down. You can even tilt it a little bit out towards the small finger, and you can use the other hand if you need to but often people feel the stretch right here, and then you can reverse it going the other way, minute at a time, 10 times a day. There are also braces or straps, either at the upper forearm or at the wrist. These either take tension off of the tendons at the elbow or allow the tendons to rest by not allowing the wrist to move. Other things like anti-inflammatory medications, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications can help reduce pain. Other things like CBD are being studied, but the jury is still out on the true effectiveness as of right now. Things like physical therapy or massage or similar type of exercises may provide some good benefit and feels good. Then there are injections. Classically, tennis elbow was treated with corticosteroid injections. These are strong anti-inflammatory medications put right where the problem is. They certainly can provide good pain relief, but often it is temporary. Sometimes temporary is okay as long as the body eventually heals and the patient can get through the tasks they really need to do. However, there is some evidence that putting strong anti-inflammatory medication into that area may slow the overall healing for a process that already takes a while. This is where another type of treatment comes in, platelet-rich plasma, or PRP. There are similar treatments such as needling, taking a needle and jabbing the area to get bleeding to happen, or even injecting some of the patient's own whole blood into the area. Another step in this direction is PRP, by isolating platelets from our blood, the cells involved in blood coagulation, and take part in the initial steps of the inflammatory response, or healing response, and putting them into the area of the tendon that is not healing, you may get healing to accelerate. It makes intuitive sense. There is growing evidence that for tennis elbow, PRP is helpful. On a side note, since it is supposed to create an inflammatory response, there can actually be increased pain for several days or even a week after a PRP injection. The last option is surgery. It usually is not even considered until symptoms have been going on for 6 to 12 months and you've tried everything else. There are many described surgeries for tennis elbow, and the surgeries do get good outcomes. Most of the surgeries involve cutting away the diseased tissue. This can be done through an open incision, through a scope arthroscopically, or through a little nick in the skin and using ultrasound. Some surgeons like to then repair tissues afterwards, but this is not always necessary. Depending on the type of surgery, recovery times vary. So there you go, tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis, painful disease tendon on the outside of our elbow that is involved in extending the wrist. I guess it is easier just to call it tennis elbow. It is very common. It can happen to anyone. But the combat athlete may be at an increased risk, especially if they have to grip and pull a lot with that gi. It almost always gets better with time, but some treatments can help push things in the right direction faster. Hopefully, you should also better understand the act of how gripping works. Perhaps this is information that you can utilize when trying to break someone else's grip and how inflammation is important for healing. It is definitely not always the enemy. So hopefully, you all found this helpful. Again, I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, specialist in the arm, dude who is trying to stay active myself. And remember to like and share and subscribe these videos if you like them. Take care of your body and it will take care of you. Let's keep moving.